Three, two, one. <laughs> I am extremely honored to be here. I am. I do a number of things. And what I'm going to do now, if you, if you don't mind, I'll tell you a quick story and then I'm going to jump over to some slides to keep it kind of going. But I've done a number of things for quite a while. I am. I'm a big dreamer, and I've always I, I've always believed in dreaming big. So I'm a father. I have two teenagers. My daughter just started junior college um, last year. My son has one more year in school. And uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I started off working in corporate America, and I realized that my path was going to be that of the entrepreneur. How many of you out there imagine starting your own businesses? Raise your hand. Wow. Okay. And then how many of you guys have trust funds? Raise your hand. <laughs> All good. It's really helpful if you start off with a trust fund to start your own business, but I didn't <laughs> Do that at all. I had to start off figuring it out. How many of you guys plan on going to corporate America and have some idea in terms of what you want to do? Raise your hand. Okay, all good. Listen, there's no good road or bad road. It's really a matter of preference. Um, I've done a number of things. As uh, Deb said, I've worked with companies like Microsoft, LinkedIn, the list goes on. And more importantly, what happened for me is that I realized with my learning style, I'm an experiential learner. So as I learn information, I've written four books now, I'm working on my fifth book. It was easier for me to find a book that I enjoyed reading and then mimic the process in my own learning style. So versus going online or, or whatever, uh, you know, I needed to take something, have a physical kinesthetic version of it, go, I love this book. I love the font type. I love the messaging. I'm going to create a book like that. So I'm an experiential learner which has led me to building a life where I've been able to create experiences. Um, most recently, I'm currently working, I have, I have three companies. <laughs> I have an HR, a, a consulting company, where I, I literally still help businesses to find talent, so I still have a recruitment and HR company. I'm working with an interesting project right now, and what we're doing is um, it's a one-of-a-kind project. It's a there's a, a guy named Sam Zell. Now, any of you guys who know anything about commercial real estate may have heard the name Sam Zell. Mm -hmm. Sam Zell has a company called EGI, it's Equity Group Investments. He sold his last business for $39 billion. Him and three other billionaires who are on the Mexican side of the fence, they created this border crossing in San Diego, which is where I'm at. And, uh, it's a border crossing where you cross from San Diego, San Diego into the Tijuana airport, but you pay a toll and it gets you across the, um, it gets you into the airport faster than any other way. And it's actually a two year new business. Year number one, they projected 700,000 users. Year number one, they had 1.4 million users. Year number two, which was last year, they had 2 million and growing. So one of my companies is helping staff as well as do HR. And the project that I have the pleasure of overseeing right now out of all the things that we're doing with them is we're opening a Starbucks. <laughs> so literally, I have 80 people showing up tomorrow in a room for baristas and managers, etc. So I'm opening a Starbucks. But I, I tell you this story to say there's so many cool things you can do in business with your life and time. I enjoy being an entrepreneur. I've enjoyed working in corporate America. And I hope that some of the ideas that I share with you today give you some insight to how your personal brand, which really more importantly, your professional brand coupled, net, coupled with networking and LinkedIn will help you to get to where you're going. So without any further ado, I'm going to shift over to some slides I'm going to share with you. So stay tuned. All right. So we talked about uh, the session. I call it LinkedIn, how it will determine your employability and you'll see why. A little bit about me, uh, you know, Deb said enough, I think I just said enough, more importantly, I've been an online instructor, I've done lots of really, really cool things, uh, I've worked with Cengage Learning, uh, I've been an online instructor for quite a few years, I published a course with Pearson Education and a coaching system, and I continue to do lots of other things, and when people invite me to speak just like now, I usually say, yeah, because it's part of my passion. I enjoy interacting and sharing ideas. I am a coach and a mentor still. 
I have five, five, let's say, points to my overall core philosophy right now that I'd like to share with you. Number one, as I said early on, I'm a dreamer, and I am a fan of dreaming big. Now, some people will tell you, no, 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 you don't need to put those dreams away and get serious about life, etc. I can tell you right now that if someone would have told Steve Jobs that, which they probably did, it didn't stop him from dreaming, right? Anybody know, anybody know who Steve Jobs is? <laughs> exactly. So here's a quick, quick. if you didn't know, so Steve started the company, him and um, Wozniak. He went off, he grew the company, got investors. They, they actually had a successful product. Steve was a very intense guy, so they just placed him as CEO. While he got fired as CEO, he went off to start two other companies. Actually, probably more than that. But the two prominent companies he started, um, one of them was called Next Computers, which is really the, it was the, the um, internal uh, processing for the new Macs that everyone uses now. And then the other was the impetus of Pixar. He started Pixar. Did anybody know that? Right, using his technology and the computing power and all the above. So the guy kept dreaming. He kept dreaming big. He had a family. He had a company. He was still a dreamer. So number one, dream. Dream huge. Don't let anyone ever keep you from dreaming. And most importantly, don't let yourself keep you believing that you have to dream small. Dream so big that it's scary. Now, number two, plan. A dream without a plan is just a fantasy. Okay, so I just said, hey, dream, dream big. But wow. make sure that as you're checking in with yourself, plan to go along with your dream. You know, dream and then set some plans for it so that you can actually start executing on those plans, which is step number three. Dream, you plan, and then you start executing. Because if you had a dream and a plan and you put that dream plan on a shelf, <coughs> whatever happened, right? You have a dream, you got a plan, nothing's going on. Now you got to add some fuel to it. You got to execute. Number four, what I found in this life of mine is that, you know, I was a dreamer, real big dreamer, and then I realized it's like, wow, man, I, I talk more about my dreams than I'm doing anything. So I started planning, and then I started executing, and I started overachieving. And um, needless to say, in the world that I live in, where I believe that we can manifest ideas, right? You take an idea and you manifest it. You do all the work. At a certain juncture, when you run into obstacles, sometimes you have to believe. <laughs> so I, I believe in myself, which is the first core. I dream, plan, execute, and then you got to believe. Believe in yourself. Believe that you are actually capable of getting this mission done. And then sometimes you got to believe in something larger than yourself, whatever that is. But belief is a very important piece of the combination. And then finally, Success is really the byproduct of your dreaming, your planning, your executing, your believing, hanging in there. Success is really a byproduct. It is not money. Success is not what everybody says. Success is the ability to take a thought, give it a plan, which is structure, to execute on that structure. Keep believing until you bring that from the ether into the material, which and in that process is really success. Now. Some people make a lot of money, like the Steve Jobs, and the list goes on and on. Sometimes we don't make money with our ideas, but success really is not based on the measure of money. It's based on the idea that you can take something from your imagination and bring it to life. Does anybody agree with that concept? Yes. How many of you guys have dreams? <laughs> Wait, I can't see you right now. How many of you guys have dreams? Say yes. Yes. Awesome. Keep on dreaming, keep on planning, executing, believing. I guarantee you will be successful if you just keep that process going. Okay? Now, here's a little exercise that I have you guys do that. I'm going to pause it. How's that sound? Sound pretty good? Yeah. <laughs> now, does anybody know who that artist is? Say it all at once. <laughs> awesome. So here's an exercise that I want you to do. And the exercise is going to be very simple. I want you guys to introduce yourself to someone in that room that you don't know. And quite simply, we're going to take three minutes, which is the length of the song. Stand up right now. Everybody stand up. Exercise. 
Well, the music starts playing. Simon says, go introduce someone. And it'll be very simple. Hi, I'm Ron. Um, I, I'm a student. My major is X. Um, I plan on doing X. And then you say, what about you? And you allow them to introduce themselves. So they'll tell them what your major is or what your plan is and a little bit about yourself. You guys have to do this. Reach as many people as you can before the song starts. And I want you guys to find out something quick. But find out something about someone that you don't know and maybe something interesting that you can repeat. This is a very fast exercise starting now. Yeah, I'm say I'm all about short walks. Brad. <laughs> Wow! What? That was very wrong. Awesome! Awesome! You guys are a great group. So, number one, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> Make sure I'm not talking to myself over here. All right. Number two, um, I know that you guys just got through doing the exercise, so I'm going to ask for a couple of uh, volunteers. Number, let's see here. Uh, I need a volunteer. I want someone to tell me. Give me the give me the name of someone you just met and something interesting you learned about them. Volunteer. Yay. All right, first table. Yeah. There you go. Uh, stand up. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yep. So I just met Katie, and Katie says that she wants to work in the nonprofit. <laughs> awesome! Awesome! Great! Give her give her give her a hand. All right, another volunteer. Okay. All right, Dan. I met Marco. Marco's going to be a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. <laughs> hey, Marco, stand up. Wait. Marco, wait. Marco, Marco, tell me a little bit about you and, and how are you going to be a millionaire? I love it. Um, I plan on opening up. Uh, starting a nonprofit myself. I'm also doing some investing um, in real estate. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a few ideas, but I don't want to like give them out. So you talked about like talking about uh, you talked about like you know tell your ideas or whatever. But uh, I didn't feel comfortable doing that, so I gave a few of them. But that's it. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. You know, listen, give them a hand. That that's good enough, sir. All good. So here's here's a snapshot, and want you guys to to get a snapshot of this. Number one. Your career services department is extremely important because you are the culmination of what your alumni network is. So every single person in this, Marco will be a millionaire. There will be some nonprofits. You guys are all going to go off and do different things. Your career services offices will help you to stay in touch and keep organized, as will some of the strategies I'm going to show you. So make sure that Greg and Deb are your best friends because this is important stuff. Uh, <laughs> all right, so I'm going to go on to the next idea. In this session, I'm going to share three simple ideas. Number one, why your professional brand is critical. Number two, why you should take LinkedIn extremely serious. And then uh, I'll give you some LinkedIn professional branding tips. Before I go on, how many of you guys have heard of LinkedIn? Raise your hand. <laughs> all right, hands down. Uh, how many feel that if you could grab from this session at least one idea and implement it, that this will have been worth your time? At least one idea. Raise your hand. All right, cool. I'm going to make sure you get more than that. Which social media sites do you use regularly? And Facebook? Yeah. Instagram? Raise your hand. YouTube? Twitter? Snapchat? Pinterest? LinkedIn regularly. Awesome. All right, cool. Very cool. Here's the idea. Talking about any time that you use social media, you leave what's called a digital footprint, right? So the real truth about social media is that any time you join anything, and I don't care what, there are a bunch of servers in the world that collect data on us. Every, every text message, everything you do, those leave a digital footprint. 
Now, let's talk about the importance of a professional brand and why that's important, especially with me being an HR guy who have, I've been screening people for a long time. Let me show you a few, a few simple ideas. Professional branding is very interesting because there are a lot of people competing in a similar space oftentimes for the same types of things, unless, of course, you're an entrepreneur like Marco who has unique ideas that he's going to share with the world at the same time. There's no shortage of people who want to bring ideas into the world. Your professional brand and how you do it will make the biggest difference. Now, I'm going to play a little game. An executive at a company. You're going to be a decision maker in this process, and your job is very simple. You're going to be a hiring manager. You have a few jobs. You have several applicants, and <clears throat> the first thing we're going to do is a Google search to see what they look like with their social media presence before we decide to bring them in. Do you know why? Because that's what hiring managers do. You apply online, you apply through whatever means. Guess what we do? We do a social media search to see who you are for the most part before we even bring you in. So that way we can make a decision to see how you're managing yourself. Here's what you guys have found in the process. You ready? Yeah. Yeah. I can't hear you. Are you ready? Yeah. Awesome. Let's do this. Here are the applicants. This person wants to be a babysitter. What do you think? <laughs> Oops. I don't think I'd be calling this person. <laughs> Social media special specialist, would you set this person up for a phone interview? Yes or no? Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Looking for an internship. Would you guys bring this person in for an internship? No. no. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't know what she's smoking, and in California, it's completely legal. Whatever it is, does not matter. This impression creates an, it, it creates an impression on your brain, right? Right. Awesome. <clears throat> Chief Marketing Officer, you have, you have enough money in your, your startup business and you're ready to spend $300,000 a year on a Chief Marketing Officer. He applied. Would you consider bringing him in for an interview? Yes. yes. Event planner. You guys throw parties. You throw really good events. Would you consider this guy? Yes. <laughs> this, is, this is a loaded question because he looks like he has. He loves having a good time, right? But do you want him to do that? Do that on company time, right? No. <laughs> so, accounting position. Yes or no? Yes. yes. Okay. Human resources intern. <laughs> okay, financial position in your company. Absolutely. Yes. Product marketing position. No way. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, once again, relatively speaking, after hours, happy hour, having a good time. However, do you post that kind of information so that people can see it? That's a question. We can talk about that later. Vice president of finance. Yes. Okay. This guy wants to do some speaking. What do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. 21st century personal brand is something people experience while you are asleep. So I can Google search you. Let's say you apply for one of my openings in, in any of the positions that I manage. I'm going to Google search you. Now, here's a real survey that was done. And the question was asked, have you ever rejected a candidate because of what you saw about them on social networking? The answer was 69% of the people um, uh, surveyed said yes. <clears throat> Why have you rejected those candidates? Number one, posted inappropriate photos. In the exercise we just got through doing, we made decisions based on what we saw had nothing to do with whether they were from Harvard or Northwood or it does not matter. The way our brains work is we make decisions based on what we just see. The left brain actually is the part of our brain that counts. It discriminates. It actually, it, it actually allows us to know that we're not sitting in the wall, right? So it helps us to define where we are. The right brain includes. But when our brains are functioning properly, which is what most of us do, we make decisions and we exercise judgment. So in the exercise we just got through doing, we saw appropriate and inappropriate photos. 
Those of them that we thought were inappropriate, we said no without knowing anything about those people. Number two, they pro, pro, uh, posted inappropriate comments. Number three, posted content about them drinking, which we, we did the same thing. Very interesting. Guess what? I am a fan of wine. I live in a place where there's a new wine region, and I love wine. I don't usually post those types of images online just based on managing my professional brand. Posted content about them using drugs. Hmm, wow. Posted negative comments about a previous employer. Uh, demonstrated poor communication skills. This is really big, ladies and gentlemen. I know you guys are extremely well educated at Northwood because it's a cool school. How you articulate yourself on social media whether it's casual or professional, that's how I perceive your ability to communicate. Now, we are now starting to judge people on how they write, how they tweet, how they text, etc. That is now a form of communication, and it's being done, and we're now judging it to determine if you're a good candidate who can communicate effectively leveraging email or any of the other mediums. This is a fairly new rule. Made discriminatory comments, Lied about their qualifications, shared confidential information from a previous employer, uh, and then 7% never rejected a candidate based on this. I'll tell you right now, the numbers on this, it was 69% of the, the group survey. The numbers will go up, and I'll tell you why. <clears throat> Simple idea number two. Why you need to take LinkedIn very seriously, and this is going to be why those numbers are going to go up. Check this out. Most people spend time in a casual mindset online, right? You're tweeting, you're Instagramming, you might be Facebook living or whatever it is. Oftentimes, it's to socialize, stay in touch, be entertained, kill time, etc. While there's a group of people, and especially from this group right here, you guys actually usually have a purposeful mindset. I can already tell. <laughs> you invest time. You really are focused on maintaining your professional identity and making useful contacts. Every single person in this room is a useful contact because in three years, you guys are all going to be scattered around the United States in some not for profit in some business, in some executive or whatever that role is, and you will have some meaning or ability to connect and bring some type of use at some juncture in your career to one another, uh, which is why making contacts is extremely important. Um, and obviously when we invest in the purposeful mindset, we also search for opportunities online, uh, internships, etc. We also stay in touch with a purposeful mindset. Once again, with this group of people, and not just this group of people, if you look at your alumni association, which probably is quite, quite, quite old. Every single person who's graduated from Northwood is now somewhere in the world, not just the United States. Some of them are also on the If you have the ability to search a job in advance, to connect with someone who was in your alumni, who was at an opportunity that you wanted to apply at, leveraging your alumni, you would actually get in a lot easier being part of your alumni association, which is part of what we're going to learn how to do today is invest time with a purposeful mindset and specifically with your professional brand and with LinkedIn. Did you all know that 77% of all openings are now posted to LinkedIn? Anybody know that? Raise your hand. Okay, very cool. For those of you who didn't know that, that is an astounding figure, and it's going to grow. Here's why. <laughs> Microsoft paid $26.2 billion for LinkedIn, the largest acquisition in history. Did anybody know that? I know somebody in the front row knew that. Raise your hand if you knew they paid that amount of money for LinkedIn. Now, here's what's really interesting about that. If you were to calculate how big a billion dollars is, it goes 60 miles uh, 68 miles high in the sky, right? Let's take $26.2 billion, and it's probably going to go quite far out in space, which means Microsoft was pretty serious about this acquisition. How many of you all use a Microsoft product, Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint? How many of you guys use Microsoft, um, a Microsoft uh, browser, an Internet Explorer, or any of those products? Okay, Microsoft is going to make sure that with every single product they use, LinkedIn is going to be tied in. 
at some juncture, you will not be able to use a Microsoft product without going through um, the LinkedIn portal, which means using LinkedIn is going to get more serious whether you're looking for an internship or an actual career opportunity. Now, that's just my hypothesis, but I'm kind of betting that because of a $26.2 billion acquisition, they're going to get serious about how they roll this out. Okay? A couple of other stats. Right now, LinkedIn has over a half a billion or a half a million, yeah, half a billion uh, uh, professionals interested in networking. That number is probably about 600 million so far. We're, they're near approaching a billion and it's going to go really fast. There's uh, um, two new members per second joining LinkedIn, lots of industries in over 200 countries. Over 3 million, business, 3 million businesses have a LinkedIn company page, which means that these businesses have taken the time to put their company on LinkedIn for the sake of being visible on LinkedIn. One out of three professionals on the planet are on LinkedIn. There's lots of LinkedIn groups. There's a lot of meaning you can provide for that. There's lots of alumni associations, etc. Now, when we talked about your network, your alumni, right now, every single person in your room, when you graduate, you will instantly become an alumni of Northwood University, right? Right. right. When you become an alumni and you walk out those doors and you go, hey, I'm getting ready to go conquer the world, which you are because you have big dreams, you have a plan, you're going to be executing wildly and you're going to keep believing and that's where your success is going to come from. <laughs> when you do that, every single person that you see in this room and every single alumni that you have, uh, including your powerful alumni, your career resource center, you guys are all part of a network. How you use that network will determine how fast this experience goes for you. Now, the reason they brought me in was to help you to speed up your process of networking so you can get to where you're going faster. How many of you guys want to get to your goals a lot faster than slower? Raise your hand. Faster? Raise your hand. Okay, cool. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's the secret. Number one, LinkedIn is based on three degrees of connectivity. First degree would be yourself. Now, let me see here. I'm going to do this real fast. I am going to, just for the sake of this exercise, I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to jump out of there. And I'm going to have to borrow some of you guys in the room. So in from my perspective, there's a young man in the first row with a green bag, and he's got his legs crossed with black shirt. Yeah, there, what's your name? Josh. Jo Josh? Yes. Hey, Josh, how are you, man? Good, how are you? I am outstanding. Thank you so much. Um, so what do, you, what do you do? What's your objective? What, what is your, uh, your major? And what, what's your destination in life leveraging your education? Uh, my destination is to one day be a successful business owner, to solve people's problems, to change the world. Um, I'm an economics and entrepreneurship dual major, and I'm the second year here at Northwood, so sophomore. Right. Outstanding. So, Josh, here's an exercise for you. Um, who, was that, who was it that you met who wants to uh, do a not-for-profit when we did the little networking exercise? Uh, that was Katie. What's, what's, that was who? Katie. Katie? Josh, go stand by Katie. Hello, friends. <laughs> Actually, in fact, why don't you guys come to the front of the room, both of you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, Katie, how are you doing today? <laughs> Katie, so what's your destination? Well, what's your education and what's your destination? So right now I'm in the MBA program at Northwood, and my big dream is to own and run my own nonprofit. What kind of nonprofit? Yeah, that's a million-dollar question. <laughs> I don't, I don't know yet. I haven't had my epiphany moment. Okay, cool. Listen, the cool thing is that you've already decided that you want to go in the direction of not-for-profit. And, and um, uh, just to let me throw this in here, at the end of our seminar, Deb and Greg uh, have uh, asked me to offer some coaching for you all. So that's going to be one of the special bonuses I'm going to give a highlight to. So those of you who take advantage of it will get lots of value from this way and beyond. Those of you who don't, won't. Is that simple? <laughs> <I> <laughs> 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 
All right, so uh, Katie, who did you talk to in the room that you didn't know before where you derived some value uh, or just an introduction? Who did you talk to? Uh, Emily. <laughs> Emily, stand up and want you join the circle. Okay. All right, awesome. Pam, what is your education and what's your destination? I'm also in the MBA program at Northwood. My end goal is to get into management consulting. It's to do what? Get into management consulting. <clears throat> awesome. Cool. Um, you know, it's interesting. I am... Um, I know some people over at um, Ariana Huffington's company right now. She's got a company called Thrive Global. You guys familiar with that at all? Uh, and I know the guy of her business consulting group that goes in and does stuff. So I'm a good guy to know if you ever want to talk about that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, right? <laughs> you know, so here's an example. And, and just for whatever it's worth, the power of a network is actually very interesting. So let's say, starting with me, Coach Ron Nash, um, right now, I, I, I want to express what's called the three, three rings of visibility. Before today and before Deb actually brought me into the rules, uh, route, brought me into the circle, Deb and Greg, you guys didn't know anything about me, did you? Did anybody see me on that television show at all? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So you didn't know anything about me. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I, was, I was invisible. What we wanted to, and so then when you were introduced to me, we then penetrated one of the rings of, of visibility. I then became visible, right? So I'm now in the second tier. Now, in order to penetrate the first tier, which is where relationships happen, we then get introduced and then we start some kind of networking, whatever that is. When we talk on the phone, I do a coaching session. We're now playing one-on-one. -on -one. The LinkedIn exercise that I'm going to do with you all is before you guys went and introduced each other in the room, did you guys know each other? Josh, Emily, anybody know it? Did you guys know it? Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. um, I know these two. <laughs> here's the nature of reality. Why don't you guys all go sit down, and I'm going to tell you, I'll, I'll demonstrate the idea. Go back, sit back where you are. So here's the interesting idea. Now, uh, I think I'm going to need one more volunteer. Emily, who did you meet when you uh, did the exercise? Um, I met, where is he at? No one will point him out to you. Oh, um, Lawrence, who wants to own a dealership someday. Okay. Lawrence, stand up, please. Come to the front of the room since I had everybody else do it. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, what's your, number one, uh, what's your, well, education, well, actually, let's, let's do a quick thing. Simon says, raise your left hand. Simon says, raise your left hand. Yeah, just, yeah, just, Simon says, raise your right foot. Simon <laughs> says, raise your right hand. You put your, I didn't, Simon didn't say put your other hand down. <laughs> no, let's do that. I was just, I'm just playing. No, if I had more time, we'd play Simon Says. I love that stuff. Right, so. <laughs> Lauren, Lauren, what's your education and destination? Um, all right, so I'm um, double majoring in automotive marketing and management and insurance risk management and then a minor in finance. So you pl what what are you doing with um what what type of you want to open a dealership? Yeah. What kind of car? Um, I haven't figured that out yet. Um, probably the more um, luxury vehicles, like a Tesla or something. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting ready to get it a Tesla X series. That's my next car. I'm telling you right now. It's it's my dream. It's my dream. <laughs> <laughs> I will post it on LinkedIn when I get it too. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so here's the deal, dealership. All right, have a seat, sir. Thank you so much for coming up. All right. Now, here's the helio. The example of LinkedIn based on three degrees of connectivity. So let's say Josh being the first person. Um, Josh is going to be the number one person. So if Josh wanted to establish some connections as an entrepreneur to grow his consulting business, and we weren't in the same room, it would be hard for him to see who was in his network, right? So let's say that Josh didn't know it, but Katie actually, even though she's going to start a not-for-profit, Katie actually needed his services or knew someone who could use his services. But how would Josh know that? And, and so you guys graduated. It's now several weeks, several months, a year down the line. Josh is ready to go. He doesn't know. Now he's starting to network to build his business. I didn't know that Katie actually had someone in her network who could use the services to speed things up or in a consulting business or some practice that would help Josh. So Josh would be our first guy. And 
coming from Josh Seats. He's he's his own connection. And then um, let's see here. One degree away from Josh is Katie. So I'm going to go over to my screen share example just to illustrate what I'm talking about, just so you guys will understand what I'm talking about. Once again, Josh is here, right? So Josh reaches out to Katie, who is he's now connected with Katie on LinkedIn. She's one degree, so she's in his network. Now, because she's in his network, he now can see visibly who Katie is connected to. Katie now has some people in, right? so this is Josh, this is Katie. <laughs> I could have done this the other way, but since it's boy, girl, but it doesn't matter. So <laughs> Katie, they're now connected on LinkedIn because, hey, Coach Ron and this exercise we did back there, he said connect with everybody in the room. I'm now connected with Katie. She's now my first degree because every single person in this room right now, because Coach Ron said, make sure you guys all on, if you're not on LinkedIn, start an account. If you're on LinkedIn, connect with each other, and you guys are definitely going to do that for sure, right? Right. <laughs> Absolutely. So that way, this exercise was easy because Josh said, hey, oh, my God, I looked, and Katie is actually in my first tier, and Katie's connected to someone who is two degrees away from me. It's not Katie right here, but it's someone in her network. I don't have direct access, but if I actually reach out to Katie now and go, hey, Katie, your friend who's over here. <coughs> I'm interested in connecting with that person. Your friend's name is Emily. <laughs> Would you be open to introducing me to Emily? And because Josh asked politely, guess what? Em just guess what? Em guess what? Katie's going to say. Katie's going to say, "Sure, Josh." Right, Katie? Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and because because Emily and Katie are actually in this their first degree, and once again, I don't want to confuse you. So Josh is first degrees with. Katie is, in reality, first degrees with Emily, but but to Josh, she's two degrees away. Does that math make sense? Yes. Yes. All right, cool. So basically, Josh is going to ask Katie very politely to make an introduction to Emily, and at that juncture, it's going to be a warm introduction. It's always easier to have someone introduce you. Now, once Josh is introduced to Emily and they conduct business and she becomes his first degree, he's going to notice that there's also some people three degrees away from him in Emily's circle <laughs> that he wants to reach. Now, Josh is going to say, hey, Emily, now that we're friends, you mind introducing me to your friend over here? And Emily's going to say what? Yes, sir. <laughs> you know why? Because you guys have created a relationship. There's business etiquette. There's respect. And you guys are going to all do the right things. So basically, based on the idea of first degree, Second degree and third degree, Josh, um, someone he's connected to, someone who is connected to them who he doesn't know, someone is connected to this person he doesn't know. That's Those are the three degrees of separation. LinkedIn allows you to create a visible network to see who exists, not just in your city, not just from your alumni, but in the entire world. I actually do business all over the world as a result of my LinkedIn networking. Does that exercise make sense? Yes. yes. You see the value in connecting on LinkedIn just for the sake of seeing your visible networks? Yes. yes. How many of you guys are going to make sure that you're connected with each other before you leave this room today? <laughs> exactly. All right. Now, here's another example. You guys heard the Bruno Mars, which I happen to love Bruno and a number of things. Um, so a question that I asked was, okay, so we talk about LinkedIn and connecting with other people. One of the questions I had was, if I really wanted to connect with somebody like Bruno Mars, can I use LinkedIn to do it? And the answer is this. Absolutely. First thing I do is I Google Bruno Mars to see who his label is, to see if there's anybody that I can reach out to who's connected with Bruno. Who is who may be in my LinkedIn network or who's – to what, maybe one, two, or three degrees away from me on LinkedIn that I connect with, that I can connect with. So I Googled him. He's with Atlantic Records. His booking information, which is his agent, this guy. So I jumped on LinkedIn to see if that guy was on LinkedIn. Guess what? John Marks is with the William Morris Agency in Beverly Hills. He's three degrees away from me. Well, guess what? If he's three degrees away from me, that means that there's someone who's two degrees away from me and one degree away from me who can get me to him three degrees away. Does that make sense? Yes. 
So I just showed you guys the three degrees of LinkedIn. I actually have people that are connected and I know someone close enough to me who can make an introduction to John in case I want to see how to get Bruno to go to my grand opening if I had enough money. <laughs> or if I had a purpose, right? So it doesn't even require money. Let me say, hey, you not-for-profit people, if you have a if you have a reason that appeals to the artist, like right now I do some work with a guy named Caesar Milan, the dog whisperer. Anybody know who he is? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I'm doing something with Caesar in this new project I'm working on, and Caesar actually wants to be the spokesperson for it. It will not cost me a dollar to do that deal. I've actually worked with Caesar for five years or six years now. He wrote the foreword for one of my books. And from developing the relationship with Caesar, I now am brokering some other deals with Caesar, and Caesar shows up to events with me as well. So using the same networking strategy, if you have a purpose, you not-for-profit people and you entrepreneurs that aligns with the artist's vision and their purpose, a lot of times you can get them to do things if their schedule works. Does that make sense? Yes. Awesome. Cool. So here's the big, really important thing. How many of you guys are millennials? 13% of the millennial population are on LinkedIn, which means if you are invisible, you cannot be seen or hired. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So out of all the 77% of all jobs posted and all the activity happening on LinkedIn and all the alumni that's gone through the North University who are doing things and working in companies and who have not-for-profits who've gone the same career path, if you're not on LinkedIn, you cannot connect with these people. Does that make sense? <laughs> so what do we want to do? Get on LinkedIn. <laughs> How many of you guys? All right. So, so I think this is an obvious fact, but does this, if this makes a lot of sense, well, did you know this before? What I'm just saying right now, did you know that only 13% of the millennial population are on LinkedIn? How many of you guys? Raise your hand if you knew that. All right. But the cool thing is that since you're on LinkedIn, since Dev has brought me into the school, since your career services department is outstanding and you guys are already getting this, and I saw all of your hands of the people on LinkedIn, since you already know this, we can skip past this, but the biggest thing about opportunities, no matter what your age is, it does not matter. In order to be seen, you have to be visible. To be discovered, you have to be visible. I'm an expert at creating visibility strategies whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you have a not-for-profit, whether you want to go into corporate America, whether you want to be a consultant working for the biggest consulting agencies ever, being visible is how we get there, and that's what I can help you do. Okay? A few facts. 60% of employers use social networking sites to research job candidates, which we talked about and we demonstrated that, and the importance of having a professional brand that's in order. 39% of employ employers are less likely to interview applicants they can't find online. 87% of HR professionals said it was either very or somewhat important for jobs to have a social media presence on LinkedIn. Once again, as a consultant, as someone who does research, I look, I Google people and I also look to see how they represent them, their own brand and how they communicate. LinkedIn is one of my major go-tos, especially for business. Simple idea number three as we're coming into the home stretch. Professional branding tips that you're going to want to make sure you have on LinkedIn if you have a LinkedIn profile. Number one, professional photo. How, how many of you so far with the LinkedIn profile have a professional photo that you are leveraging on your profile? Raise your hand. Professional photo. Awesome. Cool. Very good. If you don't, make sure you do. Number two, professional headline. Professional headline is what you tell people you're excited about. Um, I have a process called the aspiring professional, uh, professional headline strategy. Those of you who take me up on my one-on-one -on -one coaching after this, I will teach and share with you that strategy. It's the aspiring professional strategy. Doesn't matter what you want to do, not for profit, business consultant, corporate America executive, does not matter. It works for everybody. I'm, and I'll walk you through how to do it. But it's extremely important that you have a professional headline that tells people what you're excited about. Um, this individual, as an example, he's an econ major, aspiring, and, and an aspiring financial analyst. That's actually pretty good because it allows people to know that you're not quite there, but you're open. 
uh, for networking. So it's a great thing to put on your LinkedIn profile. And by the way, your LinkedIn profile is really a billboard. So when you put that billboard out in front of a half a billion and growing executives and people, you want to make sure that you put your best foot forward. You don't have to have a complete story. You don't have to have it all figured out. You don't have to have the million dollar question answered. What you want to do is make sure you stage yourself in a way and then you start networking with people who help you answer those questions because we are here and willing if you ask us. Number three, the professional summary. It's the thing that describes what motivates you, what's your skill at, and what's next. I have an actual template and a strategy for helping teach you how to write your professional summary. Uh, it's literally a template, and from I walk you through the thinking of that process. Once again, if you take advantage of this time with me afterwards, I'll walk you all through it. And then besides that, I have another tool that has videos that are pre-recorded to help walk you through a number of different strategies, but I'm not going to tell you about that. I'll tell you about that at the end of this thing because Deb and Greg was like, hey, Ron, we love the fact that you're talking. We love the fact that we're videotaping this. We love the fact that you're willing to have one-on-ones. Is there anything else we can do with you? And I was like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll tell you about that after this as well. But more importantly, uh, getting your LinkedIn profile together and putting your storefront up or your billboard up, it exists while you're sleeping. And we're making judgments while you're sleeping. So if you ever apply for anything – and your profile and your professional branding is not in order, we are going to make judgments about you just like we did in our exercise. So it's critically important that our brand is in order before we knock on too many doors. Okay. Background banner strategy. So in your LinkedIn profile now, most of you guys already know that there's a background banner. That banner automatically populates with a blue banner. Here's a strategy. So your photo's there. Your headline's there, that blue banner's there because it automatically happens. This translates 60,000 times faster than words. I decided to use some of the psychology that I've studied in order to help influence people. Sienna Student is a uh, profile that I designed for social workers. Sienna Student is leveraging one of my branding and marketing strategies. Number one, if you were a hiring manager hiring <coughs> social worker or an aspiring social worker, would you be able to tell that she's excited about kids? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Did you have to think about her? Did you have to read anything for you to get that? No. Um, it translates immediately. Not for profit people, business consulting people, whatever your major is, you find an image, you can Google images, and if they're not watermarked, or you can use canva.com, which is a great place to create uh, it's a marketing tool. It's very inexpensive. Um, you can create a LinkedIn banner. You can find a, an image that you can, you know, Canva gives you a million images to choose from. You can create a LinkedIn banner that speaks to your brand and um, leverage Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com. And you can create a LinkedIn profile there. You can do all kinds of cool stuff with that marketing tool. I recommend that for your, your LinkedIn profile that you find an image that speaks to you. It speaks uh, in this particular case as an example. Um, Sienna student, she's an outst she has outstanding customer service. She works at Petco. She's a team player. She's got the team player award, uh, best animal care award for some of, the, for some of the volunteer work she's done. And she's passionate about animals. Now, um, in the background, there's horses in a big open space. Can you tell she loves animals? Yes. Yes. Of she can, right? But she's not a veterinarian yet. She's going to become one. The strategy is very simple. We're linking her passion to what she's aspiring to be. Does that make sense? Yes. Awesome. Can you tell this guy right here likes working with audiences and speaking with people? Yes. <laughs> Once again, images translate 60,000 times faster than word. And, and then uh, every single one of these profiles has a different approach to the professional headline strategy. And I'll walk you guys through that. All right. Now, I'm going to review as we come into the header here. We talked about the importance of a professional brand um, through some of the uh, Google search with the that we made decisions on. We determined that when we looked at images of people who had an, an online professional brand versus those who didn't, we actually determined that having a professional brand is a lot easier than having a brand that doesn't represent us, right? 
we determined that people who were partying all night or smoking something or whatever the heck it was in their professional branding and more importantly in their social media etiquette and the maintenance of their professional brand whether you post things that are that represents you properly or not we determined that having good images and good things about us works better in the professional branding etiquette number two i talked about some so some statistics about linkedin microsoft bought them they paid a lot of money this is going to get even more serious um, statistically speaking we talked about the job postings on linkedin 77 percent and it's going to go up as well as the decision makers who really want us to have a professional branded image on LinkedIn, not just LinkedIn, but all of the other markets, but LinkedIn more specifically. And then I just gave you a few ideas about the professional photo. By the way, you get a lot more hits on your LinkedIn profile if you have a professional photo than um, no photos at all. Number two, if you have a photo and that image doesn't, uh, if, if it's hard to see, if it, if it has somebody with you and your arm around them, or if it has a picture of you at a wedding because it's the best photo I have, those photos, <laughs> get, you know, we start in our brains, we go red flag. We don't say it. We don't even think it's just red flag, right? Hey, this person is out. That looks like a bar behind that person. Is, are they at a bar? <laughs> red flag, right? So your professional photos should be something that really denotes you as professional. Depending on what you're into, um, if you're in animal care, it might be you, you know, in an environment that's not distracting the background. I, re I recommend shoulder length high, headshot, smile. You want to make sure you're smart. Instead of looking like the new, a lot of the new rappers have these serious looks on this. <laughs> you want to look like people are happy to see you. It's like, hey, that person looks pleasant. <laughs> you want to look pleasant in that photo, so <laughs> make sure you do that. And then... The professional headline, the aspiring professional formula, once again, uh, econ major aspiring to, uh, not-for-profit aspiring to, business consultant aspiring to. It's okay to say to yourself, aspiring to. Uh, and then finally, background banner and summary. Once again, I'm going to walk you guys through that in our one-on-one -on -one sessions if you take advantage of it. Final idea I'm going to share with you is LinkedIn has something called the Students app. How many of you guys have the LinkedIn Students app downloaded on your mobile devices? Raise your hand. All right. So, aha. Uh so, you guys are all on LinkedIn. But the Students app, let me tell you right now, it's one of the most important apps that you will have on your phone. It will connect with, with your alumni association. It will connect with, with internships, paid internships, not paid internships, jobs. It will leverage your skills. It will connect you with things in your career path. It will show you people who have gone the same career route as you. It will allow you con to connect with people in the same journey so that you can actually create meaningful networking conversations with those individuals. It will show you salary ranges in the geographies and in the types of jobs you're looking at. It is an amazing app, LinkedIn Students app, downloaded today. It's one of the big uh, to-dos that you want to do before our coaching session because I'm going to talk about that in our coaching session. You guys got that? Yes. Cool. cool. All righty. We are now at that juncture where I'm going to take any questions, and if we need to run over just for a little bit because we're at the top of the hour. <laughs> in fact, before we do that, let me give you one more thing. You're gonna, uh, I'm going to make this available for Deb and Greg over at the Career Services, but we're going to take you to the Coach Rock Nash coaching site where there's over how to videos based on career. We have a special login, and it's actually very, very, very cool because it's an online digital career center. I will make this accessible. Uh, so you guys are going to have to go through them to get to me, but a snapshot will be got videos. It covers a variety of topics. It's mobile friendly, desktop friendly, tablet friendly, um, and it will get you there. Finally, message me. Connect with me on LinkedIn. If you're not on LinkedIn, you want to get your profile together, then connect with me. In your message, in your in-mail to me on LinkedIn, Coach Ron, I was at the Northwood University um, Career Day event on when, uh, what Tuesday, <laughs> whatever day this is. <laughs> Monday. It all, runs it all runs together. Reference this event. Reference um, your career service professionals. 
reference that you were here and then ask me, uh, tell me that you're interested in a one-on-one -on -one coaching session. I'll set up a half an hour. I'll send you my calendar. You'll book it. And then we will commence to doing the one-on-ones. Trust me, I've been doing this for a long time. I charge a lot of money for it. This is part of the value that I want to make sure that I gave you for spending the time here with me. Does that all make sense? Yes. Yeah, that's cool. awesome. So we are now going to go into the final run. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Anybody got any questions? Yep, stand up, please, so that the camera can see you. Thank you. Hi, Ron. My name is Nolan. What is the uh, the orange square, the upper left that says uh, the in? Is that like a, a status of like how many connections you have? Are you talking about the orange? Oh, oh you mean on the um, LinkedIn picture that we were looking at here? Let's see here. It's, uh, let's see. Hold on a second. You're talking about this thing? Yes. That's a premium LinkedIn premium user. I pay for a premium account. Okay. And That's then, uh, very good question. Right. So if you want to build your network really fast, other than connecting with um, Deb and Greg and asking for connections to your alumni, if you pay for a uh, student account, it will open up the database so that you can make connections faster. Cool. And then one more question, you don't mind. Um, once you have 500 um, connections, it says 500 plus, do you get to see how many you have specifically? In your own personal account, the answer is yes. I have about 20,000 plus. So in my own account, I can see it growing because all of you are going to connect with me as well, which is going to grow my – but for the uh, rest of the public, you can only see 500, and it's out there. The value of connecting to most people in general is that you never know when your next-door neighbor is connected to the CEO or president of some organization or the hiring manager. So great question. Thanks, Ron. No worries. Thank you. Any other questions for Ron? No, uh, sure. Um, Marco. Um, so how far back – um, on the Facebook, like, where the, where the jobs go. So I got, like, posts from high school that my friends from high school might have tagged me in or, like, statuses that I might have put in when it was, like, really cool to spell stuff wrong. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's actually a great question. Um, so here's what I would do. Uh, homework exercise number 23. <laughs> right, because I've been out a bunch of them. So Google yourself. And that's a great question, sir. Thank you for asking that. Google yourself. Now, when you Google yourself, what's going to come up is anything that relates to your name, right? So make sure you find yourself. And back when you're doing stuff on Facebook or MySpace or whatever the heck existed back then, Google yourself, go through not just the first page, because most people stop at the first page, but go back to, eh, I'm going to make this a little, go back to page number six or seven or eight or nine or ten, right? You will see the stuff that most people don't go past for one or two. This one we're Googling. Go back to page number 10 to make sure there's nothing really weird there. Here's why. Some of you are going to run for office, and you don't even know it now. You're going to run for mayor, city council, whatever. You're going to do stuff that actually you're going to go, oh, my God, I didn't even realize I was going to be doing this. At that juncture, the Secret Service or someone is going to do a background check on you that goes all the way back as far as you can. They're going to check your text messages. They're going to check everything they can. And you didn't even know it because we're now 10 years in the future and you're going to go, oh, shoot. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so what you want to do as a result of this exercise is mark when you are that um, CEO of that, that special project that you're working on. What you want to do is make sure that that brand is clean. Find some stuff. And what you want to do is you want to start adding. You want to close any accounts, delete any pictures that you can find. From there, so you click on it, go there, delete those things. Now, they're not going to go away. They're just going to get buried. They're in some servers. on Google and everybody's got these servers, so they'll be there. But you want to delete anything you can, close any accounts that are not relevant, kill any photos, any posts, unfortunately, they exist. And then start adding any good images and professional images from now going forward. What you want to do is you want to push the negative stuff down with good stuff. So start posting really good stuff, which pushes the – the other stuff down, right? And the further, the further, when it gets to page 100, nobody will ever find it, find it other than the Secret Service. So at this juncture, it doesn't matter. Okay. Great question. Thank yeah. you. Anybody else? Anybody else? No question. Yes, Josh? Um, <laughs> so I've gotten a couple like uh, messages from potential business owners or uh, potential employers who have like, offered me. Um, to apply to or look into a company or something like that, and I've gone to their page and they didn't look 
super credible or maybe they were upcoming? How do you kind of weed those people out? You know what? That's actually a very good question. And once again, you just got through using the same process of de- making a decision or, or, or evaluating based on their brands, right? <laughs> so they establish their brands and they look, et cetera, et cetera. Now it could be, um, who, who knows? Um, so you go to their page and once again, one of the things that I, I will Google them see what type of credibility they have just in the world at large, right? You see what saying, but Google them. Go Google them and see what kind of credibility they have at large. Um, and then number two is if you, if you accept someone's, uh, um, if, if, they're, if they want to connect with you or something like that and you accept it, they now come into your network. You can now see who's connected to them in your network. And you may see someone you know who's credible, who's connected to them where you may get some more information. But it doesn't matter. The minute you accept someone to connect in your network, their network opens up to you. You can now look in their network to see what types of people they're connected to. Out to someone who might be doing business with them to go, hey, listen, I'm contemplating working for this organization. I see you have some connection with this organization. Can you tell me anything about this organization? So in essence, do your homework by connecting with people who know more about them or who may have some affinity or who may work there. Make sense? Yes, thank you. And then if they don't seem credible after that, you delete them from your network. Okay. <laughs> so, you. A great question, by the way. Great question. Luke's got a question. Yep. So, so uh, I have a business just on the side that I kind of run, um, but not full-time, not what I want to do eventually. Uh-huh. Uh, so is that something that I should have on my LinkedIn, or do you think that prohibits or makes it look like to employers that I'm busy off with something else? You know, that's actually an excellent question for the, uh, those of you who are all doing other stuff as well. Um, uh, how do you integrate those ideas to make it look like you're not uh, ADHD? or doing something else. Um, <laughs> great question. Listen, I struggle with that because I'm also a musician. I have a TV show. I got all kinds of stuff going on. How do I make it look like I'm focused, right? So, <laughs> like, wow, <laughs> what are we getting into here? <laughs> so, the answer is, and, and what kind of a business do you have, by the way? Uh, I run the, the financial side of a, a wedding florist. So, I don't touch the flowers. But I just I touch the numbers. Awesome. What's your um, destination, your, your um, education destination? Uh, financial advising. So it has something to do with where you're going. You're actually leveraging those skills in this business, correct? Yes. All right, so the question is, is how do you make those, those are what's called transferable skills to wherever you're going. How do you make sure those transferable skills, no matter what business you're working with, are obvious on your LinkedIn profile? So number one, I would absolutely post that on your um, LinkedIn profile. And I, I like your tr- bullet point, your transferable skills. Other than the the hard skills, obviously that you have, which are your financial analysis and your P and L and all the stuff you're doing, which are critical, you're actually doing it in reality. Show yeah. that, show the business, your mm-hmm. entrepreneurship, and then the soft skills that you have, which are communication, customer interaction, et cetera, et cetera, teamworking, management, leadership. Those are all skills that every single one of you, by the way, with your not for profits, et cetera volunteering, if you don't have actual real experience, volunteer somewhere where you can actually stage the fact that you have real life experience with people. The thing that a lot of students miss in the process is what we want to hire in the world outside of school are people who actually know how to get along with other people who can actually execute in the real world. And education is the, is only the first step in once you penetrate that, how do you get along with these people? Have you executed? How do you communicate? How do you use Microsoft Office and communication? How do you not really leverage your transferable, transferable skills? So you just ask a very powerful question that actually opens up something else. So communi- communicating that through your social media and on your LinkedIn, absolutely, without a doubt, make sure you do. Great question. Awesome. Thank you. Anything else? I have a quick question for you, Coach. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. How about how many uh, how much time per day or per week do you really spend on your LinkedIn profile and doing this work? What's you a good know, amount? That's actually a great question. Um, in the earlier stages, you want to spend more time, right? So it's a, it's a relative question, but early on, you want to spend more time. I mean, right now, going for getting ready to graduate and go out into the world. Number one, make sure you have an 
make sure you have a LinkedIn profile in the student's app. Number two, make sure that you've dialed in the strategies that I will share. Uh, obviously, background banner. Make sure that photo is really a professional photo, professional headline, inspiring, summary, experience. Hey, I don't have experience. Okay, great. Let's try the things you've done. So early on, you're going to want to make sure you do, you do all the work um, and then connecting with people. So in you know, a few times a week, you probably want to be on, and I'd say in the, mind, uh, um, in the mindset of, hey, I'm, I'm, this is, I'm, it's purposeful. It's going to be somewhere. So I'm going to invest – a couple of hours per week and you can do a half an hour today half an hour tomorrow etc etc so four days jump on there get serious today I'm gonna to work on my professional summary right so spend that tomorrow I'm gonna to work on it you don't have to do it all at once it's an evolution by the time you get all that work done a couple of hours a week by the end of the month you've actually completed the exercise so now you actually have a profile that serves you as opposed that as opposed to working against you and then we move into the phase of connecting and then professional networking once again when you talk to me I'm gonna give you guys all very specific um, I I'll give you a very specific recipe that you will work and executable things you can do and some timelines with it as well but I'd say early on you want to you want to put more time into it now so that it serves you. Once you realize how much this is going, this is going to be, other than your education that you all just got through spending a lot of money on, your network is going to be the other biggest investment you ever make in your lives, starting with where what we're talking about right now. Did that answer your question, Deb? Absolutely. Cool. All right. Well, we do need to wrap up, Coach. So thank you again. Let's give him a nice round of applause. Yeah, thank you all. I hope that you, how many of you guys got at least one idea out of this that was useful? How many of you got two ideas that was useful? <laughs> Three ideas? <laughs> yeah, awesome. Cool. So um, what I'd like you to do is, once again, I'll give uh, Deb and Greg some information for the Coach Ron Nash site. But the most important thing you guys are all going to want to do is connect with me on LinkedIn, reference the session, schedule your one-on-ones. Do that before the week is over. I'm in really busy mode, but I will make sure I get to every each and every one of you guys as quickly as I can. So thank you so very much. Give Deb, Greg, and John a big hand for executing. <laughs>